Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello again. My name is Ray Gary, and you've tuned into another episode of the Curry Cafe. Curry Cafe is a very informal discussion we have with uh, today four people about various things going on in the world or in Brookings or any place. Uh, I have chosen today three people to be with me who have spent a great deal of time studying this subject and are very knowledgeable, and they're all laughing now. But anyway, so we'll go around the table and introduce everybody. Well, thank you for qualifying that, Ray. <laughs> I'm Robin Renee, relatives and new to the Brookings and loving the life here. All right, and I'm uh, Rick McNamara, volunteer here, and uh, and to my left. Hi, this is Kathy Justman again. I'm a volunteer in several capacities around town, and I was the one who wasn't laughing because I have um, studied up on this uh, subject, like... Um, what is climate change doing to us, and who wants collapse, and who gains from a collapse of our of our structures, our infrastructures, our justice system, our legal system, our expressing ourselves system? Who gains from that? So anyway, we uh, this climate change thing. I mean, we've been talking about it since oh, I don't know. I was a teenager, I guess, or maybe before then. And um, people are jumping up saying, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that. And the reality is we're not doing a damn thing. Uh, there's very, very little going on in this country that of, of any note uh, and around the world in a lot of ways. And, and we are desperately falling behind. Uh, the weather right now that's going through the country is uh, is unbelievable. Very extreme. <laughs> very extreme. I... Uh, I don't usually pay attention to, to storm news. It's all kind of the same thing. There's some guy standing in front of a collapsed house saying that uh, there were three children and they escaped or whatever. And so I just kind of buzz through that stuff. But there's a lot of it right now that I can't really even buzz through. It's, it's just it's just there. And we still have a lot of people who, uh, oh, we have a guy that wants to be president and says that his First priority is going to be drill, baby, drill, and let's get rid of all this. Um, mm. What does he call it? Fossils? Uh, I mean, uh, green yeah. energy. Green energy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's and get rid of it. We still, I, I have no idea why we still sell 400 cars with 400 horsepower just to zip around town at ridiculous speeds. Um we're not just not doing anything. We're not taking it seriously at all. Well, despite what's happening in society, ha is there a point where we may have reached global warming being irreversible? I think I, a lot of people are saying that now, aren't they? They are. I, I, uh, I personally, uh, not being a scientist, I personally don't think so yet. But it's certainly reaching critical levels. Okay, if it is irreversible, that means we have to adapt to it. Now, a lot of um, pundits on the uh, side of the um, conservative, ultra-conservative, are saying that it doesn't, uh, you know, we've got plenty of air, we're not going to use up the air. You know, nothing bad is going to happen, and we have to just keep on using the things we've been using. But that doesn't talk about the injustice to those people who are living in 140-degree heat and without air conditioning. And uh, it doesn't account for the people who are have no wells, have no more groundwater. Doesn't account for the lack of crops in places that used to grow lots of crops. So, you know, we just we have to think about the impact on the poor people, not just yourself. And there's there's just definitely people, some people in charge who just think about self. Hey. The, and you, you, know, you mentioned crops and things like that. That's something that affects everybody. If the price of spinach goes up, that means my spinach salad price goes up. Um, and how much do you care if you're a millionaire, billionaire, or trillionaire? Right. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You don't care. No, no you don't care. It's a, 
uh, wealthy people or people who are even just pretty well fixed are, aren't affected very much by inflation. Well, it's not just here. I mean, All look the, at around the world. Oh, what's absolutely. What's going on around absolutely, the world. Yeah. I mean, there are, we probably do some things, but well, we do a lot of things, I guess, to at least appear that we're doing something about uh, pollution. But there are countries, I'm sure, in the world, some of the poorer ones that aren't doing anything, that can't do anything. Well, a lot of times I don't believe that we as a nation look beyond our borders. For example, the deforestation of the Amazon and all the rainforests. Which is supposed to be getting better, by the way. It depends on who's ruling in Brazil, yes. whether they're cutting the forests or not. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, it could be getting better. Then another party could be elected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that the, there, there again, the damage that's already done in Brazil, the Amazon forest, seems to be pretty brutal. Yes. Uh, very. I think very it's a, quor a quarter of it has been demolished, and they do grow crops in the parts that where they've cut down the trees. But it's the trees that support that that um, stream, Enemy. atmospheric stream. That makes it moist in South America. Probably Africa used to have one, you know, but now it's got the Sahara Desert. So you say crops. By crops, do you mean cattle? I include cattle? Oh, well, they cut down trees and then they grow something that they can harvest. It, everything. The, Brazil's a big country north to south. They can, in a temperate zone, tropical zone, and they can grow anything there. Wherever they cut down the jungle, they can grow something. I'm sure it's, they've got diversity of crops. There was an article just recently that over 20,000 acres of forest was deforested to put, up, to put up crops for corn. And then some conservative claimed that that much was destroyed to put up solar panels, as if that was a reason. Well, you never want to cut down trees to put up solar panels. I can't really believe that that some place had a policy to do that, but I suppose stupidity reigns uh, if you've got bureaucracy. There's a group of people <laughs> that are just antis, and I guess that- Anti-everything. Probably, uh, probably is conservatives. Uh, I, I, electric cars are all of a sudden the devil. There's problems with electric cars and probably environmental problems with, with uh, getting the batteries or creating the batteries and other things, but Far and away, um, it's better than what we had. I can only go by my gas bill, or I don't know how much. Uh, before I got an electric car, I had a pickup truck, and I put about between 125 and 150 dollars a month in that pickup truck. I obviously haven't burned any since then, except I do have a gas car that I use once in a while. But the electric car is basically free. So it's not only free money, but it's not 100 gallons I'm putting through my truck every Someone day. Someone in my family sells several electric trucks every month, and electric trucks are very popular among a certain uh, group of people because they now make them very powerful, and of course, power is everything. Well, there's a thing in the news last night that uh, Amazon is, is starting a whole fleet of electric vans to do what they call the final mile. Uh, most of their stuff is is actually goes through the mail and some of it is still in gas vehicles that, but they're they're uh uh eighteen wheelers and they're less the the vans are all being electric now. I also believe Amazon has started a Possible drone deliveries for local deliveries. Have you heard that? I've I seen it. I've heard, and I've heard that they're actually doing it in some places. Yeah, but, right. I mean, I mean, that's pretty quick. I well, I would type in something into my computer, and before I close the cover, <laughs> there's a drone okay. flying outside yeah. of my window. Well, yeah. yeah, that's that. Is that going to be part of the future? And is it climate friendly? It, it sounds like it might they, be. I think they're going to need. They were going to need more uh, centers that. Mail things from Amazon. Well, there again. I don't know where the closest one to us is, but they're going to have a heck of a drone. Right, to right. Us. Yeah, I'm sure this is just right so now. So, whatever technology large. we, whatever technology we try to address climate warming, it's got to be as good or better than the one it's replacing. That's the only way that people. Will, that's why people are buying these electric pickup trucks from a family member. It's got to be as good or better than the truck they had before. And I'm talking about big 
what do you call them, jacked up pickup trucks that they can drive around town and feel good about. There's even an electric Humvee, only I don't think it's sold. Well, I didn't go to as good or better. I went from a a full-size pickup truck to a clown car. (laughs) (laughs) Well, also, and and I believe we have talked about this before, but we have to give a little time to have the the EV thing catch up maybe in it. What, what's the the other part is not do anything and keep pumping in the fossil well, fuels. Well, that's what and, some people would say. They would say the gas consumption engine is the best thing we've ever made and we can't replace it, right? Well, it, And that gas heat is the best heat and that gas cooking is the best cooking and we can never replace it. Do you believe yeah. that? No, well, no. Uh, <laughs> but again, I think it's going to... Incredulously, she said. <laughs> at, at one, it's gonna at one take time, time, we used to say sitting around the fire in the cave. We yeah. said, man... Right. This is hot technology. We found a cave. We never not only <laughs> make fires. Right. Who can make good decisions? Yeah, and I was screwing it all up of it by learning how to talk. <laughs> um, and real quick, back to the crops in California, my home state. Sorry, folks, but that's it. Love it. Um, the big crop for many years, and who doesn't? Well, most people love almonds. Almonds are all. I worked down through the Central Valley for the railroad for years. There's almond orchards everywhere, but they're very, very water dependent. Uh, dependent. And California, like a lot of other places and states and part of the world, has been having a lot of drought problems now. Maybe last year we're so, okay now, but uh, but it was like like you talked about in Brazil. Maybe the thing is to try to uh, get the crops that aren't so water dependent and and have to change with the times. Is that? Yes. Um, well, now, there are systems for uh, trees, such as fruit trees and nut trees, where you can irrigate them and limit the evaporation. You, you'd have to coat the ground with something that repels the sunlight. And, no, and so there's almost no evaporation. You cut the evaporation from 80% a day to 5% a day, you know? They could... With technology, they could grow almonds without wasting water. I've oh. heard that it takes a, a gallon of water to grow one almond. <laughs> it's possible. I've, I've heard some pretty outrageous uh, yeah. amounts. I mean, really. And that's my point. I mean, almonds are wonderful, we, and they're very profitable. And the <laughs> almond farmers, of course, they don't really want to quit that. But so if, if, if there's a technology that will allow almond farmers to grow Almonds with less water, I would think they're going to jump on it because they, they have they, to they're making major, a very expensive infrastructure in their orchards, and they resist that. Instead, they fight to keep the same water rights that they had 50 years ago, and the groundwater keeps going down. The aquifer keeps going down. I would keep building subdivisions in places where the water is go. already. There you go. I came from the Sacramento Valley, and I, I know a lot about subdivisions. I think Tucson has the same thing with it. Yeah, they've already uh, outsourced my, their water, but they're still building new subdivisions. Phoenix has also been a big problem with that. They, uh, I, <laughs> I read something here a while back about uh, one of the, you know, they called it the Green Valley subdivision or something, but there's no water available, but they're still allowing them to build. Yeah, the internet says that it's 3.2 gallons of water per almond. I don't Ooh. know if that's correct or not. Well, it's evaporating. Eighty well, percent yeah. that they water the orchards with. You're not allowed to lie on the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> I see. Yeah. I don't have a Twitter account. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but and then of course California, the latest down there again. I hope you folks are okay <laughs> talking about California, but we're all in the same boat. Uh, they just they're getting ready now to start filling the new reservoir that they're going to have there coming from the Sacramento River called the Sites Reservoir, I believe. Didn't know about it. Yeah, it's out there oh, in, the, in the northern valley west of around Orland area. Anyway, uh, wow. now, good idea or not, I, I don't know. Um, and this can be, a, this is where it gets political, like the recent uh, coming down of the, of the dams on the Klamath River. I think that's going to be a good thing eventually. Uh, a lot of the tribes, of course, are for that. But it's getting a lot of pushback from, yeah. like Ray, you said, a lot of the conservative politicians because of what's happening now. Those dams have held back all kinds of metals and stuff over the years, which isn't a good thing. 
Well, it's going to take a couple of three years, whatever, to get those things flow and flowed out of there. If that sounds right. I think the end result's going to be wonderful. I think it's going to be a, a free flowing river again. And and the salmon population hopefully will bounce back. Yeah, free flowing river that is a bad word to conservatives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where does Why? the water come from that's going to go into that reservoir? L- I I believe Klamath Lake on uh, out by Klamath Falls. No, she's talking about the one from the Sacramento River. Oh, oh. yeah, that well, where's the water going to come from? The Sacramento, oh, the Sacramento River, Sacramento. which comes from the Trinity Mountains, the um, Siskiyou Mount, Mount Mountain Shasta. That's where the headwaters of the Mount Sacramento Shasta. River is. They're going to build a canal from the Sacramento River to the Sites Dam area out in the foot, coastal foothills there. And only in wet years they're going to, you know, allow that water to flow. Mm-hmm. So, That's already regulated? That one, I don't know. But as far as I know, they're, they're in the process now of building that mm-hmm. Sites Dam. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah. So we, we talked about uh, if things will get better. Uh, these hydro- hydrocarbons and other pollutants that go in the air, they ain't going nowhere. If we stop adding, that's all we'll do is stop adding. They're not going to dissipate in five years or 10 years or something like that. It's there. So we, we're stuck with that. Sounds like, unfortunately, we are now. Yeah. Well, if once again the world became covered with lush forests, you know, it would take about, I don't know, a few thousand years for the Million. balance to come back. I don't know. Well, I don't know how long. And if we have I, stop I think, putting smoke into well, the air, atmosphere. Uh, for, but, for our purposes, I think 3,000 years could be called none, never. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, it, it's just amazing to me. Like I said, the contraries who just, oh, We've always done it that way. Or, you know, I remember back when I was a kid, they, they wanted to get the, the lead out of gas, and there was all this controversy about it's going to do this to the engines, it's going to do that to the engines. What about what it was doing to the brains? <laughs> yeah, and Kathy earlier was talking about the, the poor people suffer the most, and I, I believe that is true. And we were talking a little bit before the show about uh, in California, the insurance uh fiasco in California, a lot of these high dollar neighborhoods living at the woodland areas, they are not able to get insurance or they're being canceled and then having to, I guess, triple, quadruple their costs if they can even get it. I mean, that's just... California has a fair plan insurance that you can purchase, very expensive. Very expensive. If all of the insurance companies refuse to write for you, you can get a fair plan. I don't know if that's available in Oregon. I know that Lloyd's and some of the right, very expensive talking. insurance companies right. will insure, but we don't have the money to yeah. pay for that kind of insurance. Right. And then these are even middle class neighborhoods, a lot of them are living in the in the woodlands or the foothills. Yeah, they a lot of those people can't can't afford that. Right. And if they're still if they still have a mortgage, you have to be insured to keep paying your mortgage. I believe I'm a renter now, so mm-hmm. I'm done with that. Mm-hmm. But it puts a lot of people in a hard spot. And again, I think that's related to climate change with the terrible forest fires that, that okay. we have and forest fire season mm-hmm. probably just around the corner. So we know that our conservative party is only interested in what happens to USA. They think that we're an island unto ourselves, right? And then the other side, which we'll call liberal for now, for what lack of a better word, progressive, liberal. Um, we're interested in what happens to the whole world because we know we all live under the same atmosphere. We all use the same water. You know, we all have to endure the same temperatures. So what happens if there is total collapse of infrastructures because of climate change and who gains from that collapse? Well, there was a, a, a movie out a while back uh, that I thought was really good. It had Meryl Streep in it and a bunch of other people called Don't Look Up. It's not the same thing. This is a meteor or something. Uh, <laughs> but but it turns out that all, all the monkey mucks had a rocket that they just went up playing and they were gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, e- easy you know, uh, uh, how ridiculous this has gotten, at least from my way of thinking. We are actually have serious scientists 
talking about the idea that we will we will need to be a multi planet uh, <laughs> civilization when we have destroyed this earth so badly that we need to go move to Mars to actually yeah. thinking of uh, uh, right, moving that... moving to Mars. That would be I have a I have a, a, a terrarium at home, not a terrarium, a vivarium where I have uh, <laughs> um, uh, some poison dart frogs. And that's how we would be living, just like my dart frogs. <laughs> I open a little bit every now and then and throw some bugs in, and they're happy. But what an existence, huh? I know exactly. <laughs> well, that's what we would. And it seems to me the technology to improve our situation and stop the degradation of the Earth would be a lot simpler than moving uh, our population to Mars. I think you hit the nail on the head. So that plot you talked about is. It covered in a lot of science fiction. What happens if we can't fix our problems here on Earth? Do we go to another planet? And then the other plan is the wealthy go underground, you yeah. know, and then they have these vaults underground that are only for the, the ultra rich. We just leave the planet's surface and let it all sort out. Say I'm, I'm speaking as a trillionaire, you know, we'll just leave the planet's surface and let it all sort out and our grandchildren will come to the surface and they'll terraform. If we can't terraform Earth, how do we think we're going to terraform another planet? <laughs> that does make sense. No, that <laughs> sounds good. The, 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 the bright side uh, uh, in, in the world news uh, from an um, environmental standpoint is populations are dropping. People are not having as many kids as they used to have. And that's, in my opinion, probably the number one problem we have on this earth is that there's just too damn many of us and we kept multiplying and multiplying now some of the countries are actually worried about they're not going to have enough workers well ai or something will take care of that i think that i think not having enough consumers or workers is probably the least of our problems when it comes to uh, environmental matters right and i've always been a kind of a, a kind of kind of i've always been a believer in yes too many people and it, and too many people Unfortunately, sometimes, most of the time, seems congregated in the areas that could least afford the population, uh, it, wh wh where they can't grow enough food. Enough food, um, you know that kind. Well, Gaza would be a yes. good example of that. Um, it's another whole deep subject, but uh, the population is, I think, a problem of uh, global warming increase or to increase and well yeah globally. increase everything increase crops yeah increase. needs i used to think that when uh oh well years ago not that many years ago <laughs> when you saw pictures of chinese cities people were running running around on bicycles and then uh they were saying that people are their uh, um, ability to buy a car is becoming better so i announced that a, a billion Chinese running around in cars is pretty bad. I, that, that's when I kind of um, kind of lost faith. I said, well, if all the Chinese and all the countries that are that populated are going to be driving cars instead of riding bicycles, we are lost. It's over. Forget it. But the Chinese are building electric cars like crazy. But we as a species, mankind, we have to fix our earth now before we move to somewhere else or what point yeah. is it to move to another planet if we haven't fixed the planet we're on? Yeah, I, I, I think at least as far as this table goes, just preaching to the choir. Of it's, course. It's just, of course. Uh, we have a show on, on this station. Um, I can't think of the name of it, and I can't think of the name of the host. Um, Michio oh. something or other. I should know his name because he's, <laughs> okay. he's on all kinds of interviews all the time, and and he does hold shows talking about how we're going to move to uh, to uh, Mars. Well, I hope that's Mich uh, not Mich in Michio Okama. Future. Okay. okay, I'm being Michio Okaku. Okaku. Okay, Michio Okaku. Okay, like um, go, go ahead. I lost that. Well, no, no, it's okay. But obviously, a scientist. Yes. Oh, very, very. Yeah, he's got and like. At what point in this society has 
have scientists become a bad word to a big faction of the country. Oh. Scientists and education uh, has taken on, on, to some people, a negative impact. Uh, and if, I, it in, if it it affects their bottom line and what they're pulling in for income, of course they're going well, to fight there it. There you go. There's the reason. There's the reason. And even the people that it it, it would affect negatively, they, they follow their leaders and say, yeah, that's bad. That's bad stuff. The um, It just is amazing that people will question scientific fact these days. Uh, well, it's a big, uh, big portion of our population don't believe in science. Or and which is amazing. Certainly science. I thought, we, yeah, we're supposed to be one of the more educated countries. I guess we still are sometimes. <laughs> well, not if we're going to drill, drill, drill. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's first day in office. Trump is going to be <laughs> drill, drill, drill. Right, right. So yeah. along with along with the uh, with the amount of pollution we will be putting in the air with more drill, baby drill, but we're also destroying a lot more of the world where they're doing this drilling. I, I come here from Alaska, and we have a big problem there with with getting land to do more oil development and it a lot of people will say that 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 the a, a lot of alaskans will say that the oil exploration there helped them because then that there's there's more money but i think the population better than doubled which really took away from what we would call the alaska lifestyle right um it it still exists but it's harder to find it. doesn't everyone in alaska get i don't know if it happened if it was when you lived there but Gets like a rebate from the government based on oil income. Hey, that's so it's like there very is. accurate. Yes, there's a, there's, a, there's a fund put aside called called the permanent fund, and every year the um, income from that permanent fund is divided through every man, woman, and child. And it will. Uh, I think the smallest I ever saw was six hundred, and I seem to remember there were some that were close to two thousand. So if you have a family of four. Um, uh, did, and is you that get an two, annual or a monthly? Oh, oh no, annual. Just annual. two thousand annually? I didn't know it was that small. Okay. Um, so if you if you have a family of four and, and the dividend is two thousand dollars, you just got eight thousand dollars, right? But that's that's even less than our earned income credit because I know that uh, young young people with two or three children get three to eight thousand dollars in the earned income bracket. Well, you don't, and, and Alaska, you don't have to go through all the trouble of having no, children. No, you don't have to apply just, for it. You yeah. don't have to apply for the, it. The only requirement is I think you have to have been living in the state for a year, and you have to <laughs> live there at least six months out of the year or something like that. So does anybody want to know who are the top, um, some of the top 10 richest families in the world? Yes. Okay. The Saudi royal family and the Abu Dhabi royal family are right there at the top because they're royal families. <laughs> and they are basically, their income is the income of their country. The next one is Walmart. Yeah. Biggest purveyor of food and everything that we need in America. I don't know why it didn't say, um, this list is not about individuals like Jeff Bezos or um, Elon Musk. Um, then it's the House of Herme, Her Herme, Hermes, Her it's spelled Hermes. Hermes, yeah. Of course, there are fashion purveyors, and there are other fashion companies like Givenchy that are way up there, right, with Hermes. Then the Rothschilds family, a banking family. Their money is in banking. Then Mars Candy Company. Wow. The Mars family wow. for, for candy. I wouldn't have expected that one. I know. Because I haven't either. had a Mars Candy in, I don't know, 20 years. So I just picked some from the list because you have to go through a lot of text to get the whole list. I watched it before on YouTube, and I was just fascinated. It actually said the Saad family has are trillionaires, trillionaires. This list doesn't say that. And I really think that's because they can look at a different part of the family. They can look at the immediate family, or they can look at all the Saudis, you know, and say, wow, they're trillionaires. But if you just look at the immediate family, they're only, um, you know, uh, 500 billion instead. Half a trillion, half a trillionaire. <laughs> So these are the people that benefit, that benefit from our collapse, what, what happens to the poor, you know? Because if there's a collapse, well, I don't know about fashion, but yeah, 
the, the and how, how are you envisioning a, a collapse? Well, the the very the ultra rich will protect themselves, and they'll still buy fashion, and I mean they'll still buy everything they buy. Whereas the rest of us, we won't even have jobs. We won't even have um, the means to to purchase anything other than our basic needs. Well, then Walmart wouldn't last very long, I don't think, without <laughs> They everybody. have to keep some of us going. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, good point. Yeah, where, where the money is. Um, you know, I have to jump real quick to the, the, let me, the Saudis. I was thinking about some our, our relationships with <clears throat> some co- with countries uh, globally. I don't know why we even attempt to be friends with some of these countries that are total misogynist and uh, women abusers, if you will, and mm-hmm. where, uh, well, Iran, of course, being, well, the, they're our enemy. Well, we did cut but, them off. We did cut well, off Iran, okay, but, 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 but not many, the Saudis. There are, there yeah. Are, yeah, there are many others, and uh, to me, that's a deal breaker when I see where they, uh, they basically don't give women rights, and of course, that was another show way back, but we did talk about, I think, I think women in power, women's rights uh, will help the world more so than the other way around. So that... Well, isn't it all money and all oil, and uh, if you've got the gold... Well, uh, yeah. The golden rule. Yeah. They have the golden rule. But they do seem to have uh, an idea, old idea, where women are subject they're subjects not you know uh yeah equal. They're, su- they're subjects. equal you know that's that's really very very foreign to us but um Ooh, sometimes uh, Ro wade uh, uh, <laughs> repealing Ro wade says but it's um, that we are way we, they're, we, they're, we're not even in the middle of in women's rights worldwide well, that's we are dropping below the middle. That's part of the collapse of society. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm Great. glad we're you talking know, about that. That is part of the collapse, you know, and that's no. not the only thing that collapses. Just think of the infrastructure of our com- country with, with all of the things that are going on weather-wise all over the world. We can see even some result of it here. The storms, the roads that crumble, the mountains that have landslides the trees that have fires, everything that happens, the hurricanes, everything, we're going to have to put money into fixing up our infrastructure. Yeah. Where is that going to come from? Miami is raising its streets because when the uh, when there's a high <laughs> tide, then they're, they're driving through the high tide. And the interesting thing about Miami is that a lot of the homes there have, or a lot of the, the Businesses and everybody has septic tanks. Miami is basically Ooh. built on sand. Ooh. So when this water is coming up from the bottom, uh, need I say bad. more? That's yeah. bad. Yeah. Well, the, the people that don't believe that climate change is actually happening, just look at a lot of the articles that are out on the internet where they discover an underground city that was before unknown because the water levels have dropped so much that they can now see it or divers can actually get to it because the levels have dropped enough that a common diver you know can actually see it yes well this is talking in you're talking about rivers and fresh water that's dropping the oceans rising water tables dropping revealing ancient cities whether in america or any uh, other part of the world it's it ha- it is revealing it is. um ancient structures but uh, at the same time, the ocean is swamping low cities like Miami and possibly um, will be affecting Manhattan. But um, I can't right now think of good examples of cities um, because there's a map. You can, you can Google it. What cities are most at risk of rising seawaters? Well, Venice is sinking. Well, that's a pretty obvious example. And it's example. been sinking yeah. for a long time, but it's yes. a lot more I suggest now. Googling the map, though, and you'll be surprised how many cities are being affected by rising oceans. I'll check it out. A lot of uh, small villages on coasts have, have moved to inland. Several vi- villages in Alaska have had to just pick up and move someplace else because of high tide, the village flooded. Obviously, islands are affected first. Pacific Atoll Islands are affected first because... You know, it's obvious. I don't have to explain it. 
but now it's affecting American and European cities. And, oh, and Asian, lots of Asian cities. So that will get the rest of us interested. Those people that live out on the, on the, on the islands are going out and sparing fish. Do we really much care about them? But now that it's actually moving into Miami and places like that, and New York is, I guess, under threat. Not sure what they're going to do, build a wall or... Galveston, Texas. Oh, but Houston, I think it was, was dreadfully fretted, f- flooded uh, a couple of years ago. This year. And recently. And this year. It's flooded right And now. they get oil all over the place when they flood because of the oil industry in Houston. And um, I suppose there are, I don't know, berms of used oil somewhere, and it just gets all over the place. It gets in everything. Yeah, but nobody thinks that it's from Charleston, South Carolina. One of the one of the problems in getting people interested in in global warming is, uh, well, by uh, two thousand and forty five, we'll have this, or by two thousand and eighty something, we'll have this, and people our age couldn't care what's going to happen in two thousand forty five. Maybe <laughs> you know, I yeah. Well, I care. The, I think a lot of us. New care. York and Miami, the top two by population will be affected by the rising and uh, the recent floodings. Um, again, I think we, we do care. A lot of us care. And I, I also hold out hope. I was, I was being a bit facetious. No, I know that. I don't, I don't, say, I don't <laughs> I'm not care. trying to zing you there, yeah. Mr. Ray. Um, um, yeah, wait a minute. Now, now I, <laughs> I lost my play. We care, but uh, I also hold out hope, young people, that will... They're going to have to battle all this stuff that's going on with climate change because, you know, it's, it is real. And uh, now, Robin, again, yeah, you talked about the people who don't believe And there are people that don't believe it. But I think that there's a lot of people that know it's coming, but profit of, for profit Can profit, and for the, uh, the short outlook, they yes. don't care. Yes. They don't care. Short term. And yeah. uh, it's become such a political third rail, if you will. That the ones that uh, know it's it's happening, but they profit from it, they just wrap the other folks up, and you know it's uh, should be some education there. So, uh, the short-sighted conservative pundits who say um, that uh, that inflation is caused by presidential policies and having a liberal Congress, uh, they're just, they're refusing to look at the inflation caused by climate change. By more streets being have to being built higher, by cities having to abandon their first floors and start building um, uh, barriers like the Dutch did, you know, dikes, uh, a system of berms against the ocean. They have to raise the whole city eventually. But these, the causes... The, the things that climate change does are causing us to spend money on, to need more taxes because we have to spend money on infrastructure because of climate change. This is something that other group refuses to see. They just say it's caused by liberal thinking. Why, why, why do we think that uh, conservative news outlets and uh, conservatives in general want to deny this when it's so obvious. Because they're run by the billionaires and the trillionaires and the millionaires. There's a lot of rural support for those conservatives these days, though. There's a a battle between the rural, if you will, and the people from the cities, that type of thing. I don't, I don't watch any of the conservative uh, stations like oh, Fox, but do they kind of lean heavily on, on biblical stuff or, or even slightly or saying... And mythology, yeah. Biblical yeah. teachings and the mythology, the myth that I could be a, a millionaire someday and I don't want to be taxed at that rate, that they're, <laughs> they don't even know that they only tax the upper upper percentage on millionaires. They don't even tax the whole I'll, income I'll, on I'll, millionaires. I'll, I'll, I'll pay the tax. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a politician and there's a lot of stuff I don't know very much about. But it just seems to me, and it's only my opinion, that in order for human, humans as a species to save the planet is that globally, not just per country or per state, but globally, we have to do everything that we know we should be doing. We should be recycling. We shouldn't be doing 
this and that and the other, but we need to do this globally so that it fixes the whole world. Because you uh, can't yeah. just fix Absolutely. one state. Agreed 100%. You have to fix the whole world. Yeah, and I, I have, I think a lot of people are starting to think, we do need to think globally because this is a global It's a global society. issue. It, yeah. And if the ocean is rising, that means terraforming. That means lifting up cities or moving them inland. Sure. That means moving whole populations of people who can't live where they now live. But we have to do it globally. And globally. Even right here in Brookings, for example, let's just take something small like recycling. Let's just take the re re the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. Do all restaurants recycle? I know they do in California. I don't know if they do here. I don't see any evidence of recycling. But that's something on a very small part, a little bit to play in saving the world, is we all have to do something. We all have recycling trash bins. Do we all use them? Well, we... Uh, None of the apartment complexes in town have recycling for apartments. The apartment dwellers have to take it themselves to the recycling on Carpenterville Road, which I do. About nine out of ten people in my apartment complex don't do. See, globally, so we're not going to fix it if it's not, not globally done. Yeah, yeah. It's not universal in this town, recycling. It has to. It it's a choice be. that people have to make an effort for. I think I've mentioned this before, maybe, when... Uh, the subdivision I live in, we all bring our trash cans down to the bottom of the road, and on uh, garbage day, there's a dozen or so there. And every now and then, a, a bear will come by and decides he wants to look into all those cans. <laughs> that could be a problem. So everything is scattered all over the place, and I'm mm -hmm. just shocked to see how many glass bottles, uh, aluminum cans, and all kinds of easily, easily yeah. uh, recycled <laughs> um, items are in there. Not only easily recycled, but... Uh, for us to recycle, but they're very useful. The aluminum is uh, glass. The, there's another point, too, because if you um, look at the statistics on how much plastic gets recycled, it's almost pointless to put your detergent bottles, your yes. yogurt things into the recycling. It's going to end up in landfill anyway in most U.S. cities. And as to where does our recycling go, it's trucked over the, uh, to the, from the coast inland to uh, Medford. And, and then where does it go? Into landfill. Wonderful. Except for the things that might get recycled, the return bottles, the aluminum foil, um, metal that's magnetic. Um, they take out some things, but they can't take out all the plastic. So globally, we'd have to change the way we all do things in order to we fix the planet. We have to change planet. our thinking. Absolutely I agree do. with that. Well, plastic has become just so ingrained in our society. What can well, Way what too much we, of that. Uh, what would we be able to replace it with? Nobody wants to have a, a glass shampoo bottle, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, no, but there are refillables. So there are stores in Sacramento. Yes. Yeah. You take your old shampoo bottle in and you refill it from a barrel. Oh, who wants to My bother sister them? does it's, that. I Two know. of my sisters do that. I'm sure there are places in Europe that do it, too. <laughs> yes. My, Worth my, required. My guess is that Germany is big on doing something like that. And uh, some Scandinavian countries like Denmark. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it's just people thinking uh, the same and working together yes. for the common good. It but, does tick a lot of people off. I, I've been using reusable grocery bags for probably 30 years when they mm -hmm. first came out. And, of course, some of the clerks, at, and now at least the ones here at Fred's, they're great, man. They'll just pop open and they're easy to fill, easy to carry. But the the first ones, the little uh, the, the bags that they had, the canvas bags, the clerks were like, "Oh man, are you kidding me? It's a pain in the you know rear to." Mm. Well, but you got to make changes, man, I, and and it does tick people off. I I, I <laughs> when I lived in Yuba City, Winco, I was shopping there, and they started charging if you wanted a plastic bag, and, yeah. and they warned people. You know, I guess it it gets people ticked a little bit, but I mean, I've seen witnessed a couple people that just went off and walked out of the store because they didn't want to pay five cents for, or they didn't have their own bags. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it was the five kind of cents. It was, it was the idea that, the, oh, they've gone liberal or something like that. Well, yeah. I, I right. always bring bags with me into the store, and every now and then uh, I'll actually be well into my shopping before I realize I haven't brought it. And when I get up to the register, the, the clerks all know me, uh, which surprised right. me that I, mm. right. uh, oh, you don't have your bags today. And we we do our best to get everything in one bag. And, yeah. 
And if it doesn't have to go in a bag, I'm just putting it in the back of my car and anyway, come right back in the basket. But yeah, I, I, again, we, uh, we just get resistant to change, and I think society can get a little lazy. I can get a little lazy at times. Um, uh, I do take my where I live in Smith River. They have those the big dumpsters with the uh, you go and take your recycles and dump them in the side. I wish they'd open the panel up a little more, but. That kind of a thing for your plastics and uh, cans, all of that stuff. A r- ridiculous amount of packaging we do, too. Uh, uh, I, I don't see any reason why a toothpaste tube should be in a box <laughs> that you take home and you So you can the stack box. them neatly on the shelf. Yeah, but they could have a bin. Yeah. They could have a bin. Right. Yep. Could have a... And we covered this before, too, but my <laughs> little bugaboo is these freaking little... Uh, and they're made out of plastic. I didn't know this. So it's stickers on the fruit. Those mm. are plastic. Mm. Oh. And, why, and why do we have to put stickers? There's a drillion stickers. And what do you do with them? I take I an orange well. and I sit down on my couch and then I remember, oh, it's got the damn sticker. Well, what I, I don't do have now, to peel it off. And now what do I do with it? I got it oh, in my I hand. throw that in the trash. Yeah, well, I, I even, crinkle it up as tight as I can and I throw it on the sure. floor. Oh, you know, well. The vacuum uh, will get it or, <laughs> okay. or the cat will find it. But like, you know, and, and we have a compost pile. So if I'm eating an apple or an orange, I put the mm. residue there. But then I, I used to put the little stickers in there too. Didn't even think about it. Oh, they're there. E, no, don't no. do that. Now I don't. 150 years from now, somebody would be yeah, it's just crazy, planting man. a cherry tree, and they'll say, oh. And you might enjoy this. Sacramento now requires a composter on your counter and a bin for composting that you do on your counter for you to dump it out before, you know, so you can fill it up every week. My sister uh, uh, lives in Sacramento, and so that's it's got a green eco bag that goes into the little bin, and it's got a tight lid to keep out flies and keep odors in. <laughs> so they have to put, every, and the, so there's like these garbage police. I'm sure people in Brookings will love hearing this, but they go around <laughs> sniffing garbage cans. If they can smell food in your garbage can, you have done a no-no. You have not collected all the, the plant material, coffee grounds, the things that smell, and put them into the recycling so that they can take them and turn them into garden uh, This is a thing? When? It's a thing in Sacramento. It's a law. Well, when I talked yeah. before about the bears getting in our garbage, yeah. they did not get in line because I I uh, compost and do everything I can to keep food waste out of my garbage can. Mm-hmm. Uh, living in Yuba City, where we had the we had a green tote, a blue tote, and a gray tote, gray garbage, blue recycling, green green waste. And they probably composted that gray stuff. Well, who knows. I do know that when I used to get up in the morning and go to work early, I would see they would have people from the uh, the, the dump place. I can't think of the proper name, um, where they would come by and they were looking through our recycles to make sure and if, that they're clean because well, dirty recyclables yeah. now, contaminate the whole. And when I first saw that, I mean, even I was like, "Wow, you're going through my my trash, huh?" But that's okay, but that ticked a lot of people off right. again. And then if you got, if they found something that was in there that wasn't recyclable, I think twice or three times, um, you would get a fine. So in, in a way, I guess I could see that making people mad, but these are the changes, like you said, we got to start thinking about. I was told that California now all new construction has uh, solar panels on the roof. That I don't know. That I don't and I know. I saw but, an article that uh, and that there's a problem with it because because uh, the power companies are not getting enough revenue to keep up their plants, even though even though they're producing less energy, they still have that a certain amount of money to maintain the lines and everything. Solar. I, I don't know that much about. We never had. Of course, when I lived in the last suburban neighborhood, we were constantly getting people knocking on the door. We, you can put solar on your house, yada, yada. I'm a little, I don't know about the requiring that now in all new buildings. They might be. And I find that a little too much. No. You could just put it on the house. You're building a house that costs $300,000 and you put $4,000 worth of panels on that will okay. pay for themselves. Well, let me just say this. The house that was right behind me, 
and we all had these terra, I call them terracotta roofs, you know, the, mm. the tile, tile roofs. Thank you. <laughs> and the house behind me, um, I knew the, the people they had solar put on later and they had nothing but trouble with that. Really? Pigeons were coming in and going underneath the solar panels. It took, it was just a lot of trouble. Let me just say, but now, uh, and then finally they came, they had somebody up there putting protection for around the solar panels well, so the pigeons first. wouldn't get in there. And then they had roof leaks. I, I'm just saying, mm. these are the kind of things you have to work out, man. The, the first, uh, I don't know how many years, uh, I lived on my homestead. I think we were there for 20 years before we actually got on the grid. Prior to that, we used solar panels and windmills. And um, when we had heavy loads, we needed to run a generator. Or in the wintertime, we couldn't run off a solar panel. I mean, we have four hours of daylight, but I mm -hmm. lived for this for the whole summer pretty much 100 so, percent on solar panels. Well, no, no, I'm for it. And believe me, when I first got my uh, my wife and I first received our, this is way back, but in one of the hot summers, that, which is redundant in uh, Central California, but we got a 500 and some dollar PG and E PG and E bill because you know running the air conditioning in a 2100 square foot house. And that, that's when we went on their so-called smart program. But I guess if you had good solar, we wouldn't have been paying that much money. I would. I have a garage that faces south pretty much, and I would love to put solar panels on it, but it would just it would not even begin to be cost effective. Okay. My, okay. But my electric bill is, <laughs> is pretty low, and it costs thousands to put that up. Out of curiosity, since global warming became global warming whenever it became a thing, and all of the things that countries and people have done globally, has it changed? Has it made any difference in the correction of what we've done to this earth you know to that. better it? How can we measure it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. Well, a question. It's the, country, the countries that, uh, some of the Scandinavian countries that are, uh, a huge percentage of, of their power is recyclable or um, Regener uh, regenerated, regenerated electricity. We're uh, doing it as a country, and our yeah. country's too divided to do anything like that. Oh, to absolutely. Save it. We're divided. Absolutely. That's a, that's a big problem. And it amazes me when you see the real damage that we were talking about. Well, we talked about too much water flooding Houston and islands. And in California, again, the Central Valley, there were many um, in uh, situations where the ground level had actually dropped feet. Mm -hmm. Because of the uh, aquifers or the or the uh, the underground water that they had was dissipating when we had those these horrible droughts, and I mean, and we'll probably have them again. And there there were smaller farming communities there that were having to have their water trucked in. The South Valley in California, I think it's the San Joaquin, but the the Big uh, Valley used to have a two hundred mile long lake. And it went from the Sierra Nevadas almost to um, the coast range, and it was huge. And so the, all that's built on swamps. So if you think about it, that if they can't reach the water with wells now, water that was on the surface and was 100 feet deep, imagine how much water California well, lost that by, lake, people, by people draining a lake. Well, by, that, if, they, if you're talking about the, I think they called it Lake Tulare, that lake came back this past temporarily, year. And temporarily. And also came back in Death Valley. Yeah, there are pictures you go. of a lake at Death Valley. So the lake what, came back. What so. I want to know is how much of that water are the illegal aliens using? <laughs> <laughs> another show. That's, a, uh, That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, it does, but it does amaze me when we see the, ac the, the, the actual damage that climate change is doing mm -hmm. that people still want to just turn their heads or to get so mad at it to... Uh, Pretend it doesn't affect it like us. an ostrich sticking the head in the uh, sand. I think it's the it's going to happen in fifty years. Doesn't bother me. Thing. I guess that could. Well, sure. Some people are are that way. I would like my children to be able to enjoy a nice, sure. clean earth. Me too. But that doesn't. Yep. Seem to be yeah, like we, it's going to happen. I couldn't care less <laughs> about your children. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, <laughs> we're running running close to the end. We, we have uh, less than five minutes left. Might be a little so early for wrap up. Who benefits from um, ignoring climate change? Hmm. I do. Yeah. I oh, find it a little people. bit of a. So you're saying the big millionaires will and well, why do you think that is? Protect themselves from the effects of it. 
Oh. So the middle class, um, I don't think they benefit from it because they live in cities and low-lying lands and they'll have to move. It's the top 3%, is it? Or the top 1%? They benefit. They benefit. They'll benefit yeah. from anything. Yeah. You know, because either way, they can make money. They can bad. hedge their bets with yeah. hedge funds. <laughs> <laughs> but if things get bad enough, I mean, the money, the money isn't going to do you any good anyway. Everyone no. loses in the Everybody end, Everybody will eventually You're lose right. if it goes that bad. Again, I'm still holding out some hope. Young, smart people, people that care, people that think globally. I think we have to start thinking globally. We and, do. And that's become kind of a bad, not a bad word, but... Uh, uh, a bad attitude the other people think. No, man, it's well, only about this little, you know, and, one country. I mean, I was, and and people thinking that we are we have the best uh, lifestyle and best everything in the world is a little crazy. I mean, yes. Not too many years ago, I can't remember who was running for president. Uh, where the uh, the uh, information from the right was, well, we're going to be living like like Europeans soon. Like this was a bad thing. What think. does that mean, living like Europeans? I don't know that, what they meant. I don't know. A step well, towards communism. That's what it no, means to them. Saying communism is things like having. Oh, they think Europe is communist or so socialist, but many people use that ex interchangeably. It's not the same. You know, I don't, I, don't, communism. I don't know if they have it here or not, but most of the hotels I stayed in in Europe, the lights aren't on, and you get out the out of the elevator, and the lights come on. It's emotion. The, the the hallways are not being lit when there's nobody there. Things like that. Mm. Mm. Well, again, I, yeah, I've never thought, I've always thought kind of a good thing. Hey, man, let's pick up a good idea. If Thailand happens to have a good idea, why don't we adopt that, that idea? I've often, of course, I'm very simplistic. Oh, I don't know much about this, but I, I've often wondered, well, let's say Japan makes good cars. Let's have Japan making the cars and let's have us do whatever it is okay. that we do good. Well, that would mean we would have to cooperate with everybody and there's just too many people that don't want to cooperate. Yeah, it's not going to happen. You know, it's no. not bipartisan. No. Mm -hmm. Well, that... We all need to be bi bipartisan. To well, uh, Ray, yeah. I, I think we should make cars where we live because they do have to be transported across the ocean if they're made in Japan. And, well, and I'm, we I'm, do we're not saying that... that, that Countries could specialize on things that they do. Well. Uh, yeah. Specializing isn't always good either. We need to have lots of diverse jobs in the United States. And Biden's bringing back jobs. And man, that's, I think that's one of the best things he's doing because we stopped making things for ourselves and we let China make everything for us. And, oh, and we, could, we could make something that we make well and sell it to China. Yes, but everything that's big that has to be transported across the Pacific Ocean is using a lot of fuel to get mm. there. I saw a, a, a new thing they're they're working with now that I think they call them super sales or something like that, where they're actually sales are put on on these uh, cargo ship cargo ships. It's not like the old uh, like the Cuddy Sark thing. Yeah, right? these yeah, these right. are very scientific Spanish things galleons. that look more like yeah. solar panels or something. And well, again, it cuts man. their fuel to practically nothing. Yeah, there you go. People thinking up the. The ways to ease the burden. I hope yeah. that's that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are getting close. So there's still an awful lot of traffic crossing the oceans. It's very crowded out there for the whales and dolphins and other sea creatures. Okay, that I got my I got my word in for the sea creatures. Um. <laughs> okay, well, uh, anybody out there listening want to come on? And join us for the Curry Cafe. You're all welcome to do it. We haven't, you know, we haven't mentioned that. This is a volunteer radio station. Yeah. KCIW.org. Click on volunteers and then just follow the prompts to what you want to do. There you go. 